Can't to ego be someday Will she only sing hallelujah Life is like a field day Jehovah is the coach Only he knows what is best And so depicts the best approach So when a man is down It means that God is changing players Maybe if he was in the game He'll be playing so reckless It's Friday, and we're looking ahead to a great weekend of football. Well, uh, other sports as well, everything across the world of sport, and it's only here on Sports Today on the Joy Sports channel. You can follow me on um, Twitter. It's uh, Ni at of five. Ni at of five is at Ni at of five. That's my Twitter handle. And of course, you can also get on my Facebook wall, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Let's get talking. I'm asking you a very simple question. Ghana is playing DR Congo in the um, quarterfinal of the Chan tournament in South Africa. Remember, this is a repeat of that big final that was played at the maiden edition some five years ago in Cote d'Ivoire. How can the Black Stars overcome the DR Congo challenge and overcome that, you know, that hurdle once and for all? You send in your messages. Remember, you can also get through uh, by 1760, the text code, irrespective of the network you're on, is going to pinch a little uh, 30 Ghana pesos from your airtime. Also, you can also start bringing in your predictions as we get ready for Roger Federer versus uh, Rafael Nadal. Nadal, over the last two years, has told a remarkable story of recovery, having recovered from a very, very uh, career-threatening knee injury. So the man is on, and um, this is going to be a very, very stiff challenge between the Swiss man and the Spaniard. Who wins this one? Rafael Nadal versus uh, Roger Federer in the Australian Open. Let me know what your thoughts are as we get ready to get into the final stages of this big competition. Of course, uh, we also will be looking at other sports, uh, other big headlines making uh, the news all over the world. Uh, that's the reason why you have to stay here. Well, is Michael Essien is, um, in uh, AC Milan? Is he making his way in there? Well, we'll be getting to find out right here on the show as well. So you stay right there. The newspapers are here in a bit, but we'll do a round of commercials. And as we always do, we rode straight into action. This is Sports Today. Ah, so uh, it's great to be in your company as always. There are many, many headlines. Uh, who uh, makes it where? That's the very big question we're asking you. Uh, story about Michael Essien making it into um, AC Milan, possibly. And also, of course, uh, Yuan Mata has completed that move to... Um, to uh, Manchester United. And of course, uh, Madrid uh, to price away Rooney. That is one big headline on the front page of the graphic sports newspaper. Of course, the Chan quarterfinal between Ghana and DR Congo uh, is also there in focus on the front page. And of course, uh, it's the two goalkeepers. Uh, goalkeeper Steven Adams of Ghana and goalkeeper Kidiaba 
<laughs> uh, that that dance where he sits and uh, rides on his bum, uh, very very interesting and has uh, made many waves. We also take uh, a sneak peek into David Beckham's garage. And also, uh, let's get into the uh, center spread. Uh, before that, let's take a look at the lifestyle page of the graphic sports um, newspaper. There we are. So, it's marvelous. It's just wonderful. Uh, Rolls-Royce Phantom Coupe. A Bentley Arage, a Lincoln Navigator, a Chevrolet Camara, Cadillac Escalade, Mercedes-Benz CL, an Audi W12 A8, and of course, a Land Rover Defender. And a GMC Yukon Jeep as well. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, take a ride uh, with uh, David Beckham, and it surely is going to be a very interesting and enjoyable and smooth one, if you ask me. So let's get into the uh, center spread, and it's action from the Chan Tournament. There we are, the big moments from the Chan Tournament as well. And this is how Ghana overcame a very stiff challenge from Ethiopia, who are now out of the competition. So there we are. That's the center spread. Let's also do a few stories. Um, and um, the graphic sports has been asking a few questions about, you know, about the Chan tournament and uh, how the format should be changed. And what your views are as well. So, I'm sure this is a, a good subject for debate as well. And um, okay, so um, Stanislas Wawrinka is making it to his very first U uh, um, Australian Open final. So there we are, Stanislas Wawrinka, the man who sent uh, Novak Djokovic parking. And of course, that is Manchester United's record signing. 42 million pounds. He cost them. 42 million pounds or uh, 30, uh, 37 uh, million euros. And a uh, very, very sad story coming in as well that Michael Schumacher there in the center, and you can see it there, uh, Michael Schumacher may be in a persistent vegetative state. Uh, um, it's very, very tough times indeed. Uh, let's say a prayer for Michael Schumacher who uh, had an accident recently and is, is, is really, really struggling uh, for his life according to the reports we're getting Let's uh, also get uh, princesses, the black princesses, who are ready to snatch the Canada ticket uh, for the next uh, under-20 uh, FIFA World Cup. Um, under-20 FIFA World Women's Cup. Um, let's also get into the uh, Kotoko Express newspaper. Well, Kotoko had a 1-1 draw with Tema Youth, a good practice exercise as Kotoko gets ready to start playing um, in the CAF Champions League preliminaries. And, um, of course, this is the, there are some stories on the inside pages as well. And um, Asante Kotoko gets busy. There we are. So a lot of practice and a lot of, uh, a lot of um, tough training. This is um, the center spread of the Kotoko Express newspaper when uh, the Porcupine Warriors faced uh, Tema Youth at the Tema Park during the week.
and that game ended 1-1. So uh, Kotoko still trying to get it right. Let's get into the Hearts news. And the uh, Hearts Kotoko and Yimba and Nugu Rangers vie for the Community Cup. Okay, there we are. So this is it. Okay, so that's the front page of the Hearts of Oak newspaper. We go to the center spread, which also brings you some images, some fine images from training. So that's from the camp of the Hearts of Oak. From Accra Hearts of Oak. And uh, now, uh, Suli Ali Muntari uh, to be going to Lazio. This is according to the 90 Minutes newspaper. And um, here we are. Randy Abe. who is the media past chairman of the Referees Appointment Committee, uh, takes over as owner of um, Heart of Lions, Spando-based Heart of Lions. And there he is. So, uh, Suli Ali Montari, to go or not to go? Big, big question indeed. And now you want to take a look at the back page of the 90 Minutes newspaper, which has the IU brothers. But before that, um, let's just take uh, a quick look at Eden Hazard, who is on the center spread, a fine pull-up. Eden Hazard surely has proved a very good buy. The Belgian uh, playing a key role in uh, Jose Mourinho's campaign, campaign for the season. And there we are, the IU brothers, Jordan and Andre. Andre did a just uh, recovering from that injury that he sustained and the surgery. So, Manchester United is on the hunt. And this is... According to the uh, Sports Filler newspaper. So there we are on the back page. Michael Essien is likely to join Galatasaray for Champions League football. That's the story there. And of course, uh, Eto's love for big games just killed off Manchester United. So um, the man, Samuel Eto Fields, he... Um, Delivered that big nail into the foot of the Manchester United team. And of course, it was so, so impossible for United to come back into that game. Of course, they managed to uh, get one back, but it still was not enough. And uh, Manchester United will continue that, of course, that, that, that talk and that debate about, uh, you know, um, you know whether, whether the man... Uh, Moyes should should continue in the position. Well, many people have different different uh, views and varied views. That's the reason why you can send us a message. Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto, it is. Get on my Facebook wall. Let's get talking. And of course, we will start off with um, some of the uh, local Black Stars players who've been talking to Joy Sports uh, from their camp um, ahead of the uh, quarterfinal game that'll be played against DR Congo. Let's take a look. Very satisfied with the performance because everybody fought as a, as a team. That's the most important thing. So I'm very uh, grateful for the players and what they did uh, today. As a leader of the team, what do this victory mean to you? Uh, it means a lot to us because uh, uh, we need vi this victory to be on top of the table. And I think uh, we, we have done it. So I think uh, everybody have done very well. I give thanks to my players. You personally, what do you make of your performance in this particular tournament? Uh, I think we are improving uh, match after match, and, and every match is every match is very difficult because the more you are going to another stage, the more the game is going tougher. So we need to uh, concentrate on uh, the next game uh, so that we can perform very well. Are we on the right track? Of course, we are on the right track. We are getting to the uh, I think the trophy, so we need to focus on the trophy now. And I'm sure you'd be very happy to touch the trophy and take I'm it. Telling you that will be my greatest uh, uh, happiness in, in the world. So for now, is uh, we thank Almighty God for uh, making us qualify to uh, the quarterfinal. And 
we also we also thank him for uh, making making our dreams come true and then uh, giving us happiness and giving uh, all Ghanaians back home uh, also uh, happiness. And how difficult was this afternoon's game? It was uh, it was it was a difficult game, uh, but uh, we thank God for uh, the victory that He has given us. It wasn't easy, but uh, we did our best, and we thank God. Uh, first of all, I'll say is I give thanks to Almighty God because this game wasn't easy. We were all determined uh, to win this match, and we knew what was at stake. We don't we don't we can't disappoint Ghanaians, and we thank God that we got the victory today. What do this victory means to you guys? Yeah, it means a lot. Okay, because. Uh, we are not going to travel far to Pokwani to play our next game. We are staying here in Blue Fenton to play our next game, which will give us much, much time to rest our legs and uh, prepare for the next task ahead of us. You personally, what do you make of your performance in this tournament? Yeah, well, it's not bad, but what I have to do is keep on improving, okay? Because in everything, we have to keep on improving so that we can give your best to the nation. You think we can win the trophy? Yeah, why not? We, we came here to win the trophy. Of course, I'm very satisfied because uh, playing against uh, Ethiopia is very difficult because they are a good side and I think uh, I did well. And uh, without my colleague, I don't think uh, I will to uh, play. So it, they all support me and I think uh, I play uh, very good well. But are you feeling some kind of pressure going into the game because this was your first start in this tournament? No, I'm not under pressure because... Uh, since when we came here, everybody has trained in mind and the coach is there. So the coach can put you at any time. So everybody is trained in mind and we are mature players. So I don't think uh, uh, somebody will be under pressure or something like that. So now we are, we are staying here as you guys wish that we continue to live here in Bluefontein. Going ahead, what would you tell Ghanaians? I think uh, we need their uh, support and prayers. Uh, they should keep on supporting us. And, I think uh, the Sunday game, uh, uh, the 90 minutes will be the uh, victorious. Well, first of all, I thank God. I thank God we were able to win by one goal today. As you, as you saw, the, as you saw on the pitch, the game was easy for us, but we were able to manage to win by one goal today. So I'm very, very happy. Going ahead, what should we expect from you, the players? Uh, what, what I'm going to say is, uh, as we came here, we are here to we are here to defend our, our country. And we are here to, to we are we are here to go to final. And what what I'm going to say is, uh, I hope I hope by inshallah by the end of our next game match we will we we win we win that match. So uh, that was uh, tournament correspondent Benedict Owusu who was uh, just uh, you know giving us uh, you know the giving us. Uh, an update of what, what the players were saying, you know, what the players said after the last round of matches. You sending your messages, get on my Facebook wall. Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. And also, um, you know, it's, it's going to be 1760 if you're on your mobile phone. Let's now listen to the chairman of the management committee of the local Black Stars team, uh, Fred Papo. And he's also been looking ahead to this big uh, uh, quarterfinal game. The Ethiopians are a very experienced side. They have nothing to lose. It is quite natural. They were going to drill us, which they did. But the, the good thing is that the boys played according to where they were told by the coach. They sacrificed a lot, and uh, they were able to persevere. And at the end of the day, we give God the glory that we came out victorious. We, we are not celebrating. This is just a, a, a step in the process. We haven't achieved the ultimate yet. And we are not going to celebrate as if this was what we came here to do, just to qualify. But I'm sure the Celebration will just be for about two, three hours. By the time we go to sleep today, tomorrow morning is business. Until we we'll, would we'll continue, we we'll start training again tomorrow to prepare for the subsequent matches. The team made up of young boys who are prepared and ready to sacrifice for for themselves and for the nation. And for the past uh, 18 months, we've been sacrificing a lot, going from their respective bases, Brekum, Doma, Wa, to Boasi, Accra, Pram Pram, to come and camp and then go back getting virtually nothing, you know, nothing significant. And they've, they've persevered. Or they are getting close to their, their, their ultimate, that is their final, and uh, we all want to encourage them to keep fighting, to go ahead and then uh, win the ultimate. We have a commitment with them with respect to bonuses. I'm sure that's what you want to ask, and you are going round, round, round. They'll be giving their bonuses at the appropriate time.
<laughs> okay, so the bonuses uh, issue uh, sorted out. Uh, they surely will be given their bonuses. Okay, let's take a listen to what the journalists are also saying. Jerry Afri, Pamka, and of course, um, uh, Jerry Kwame Ayinsu. They are also there at the Chan tournament covering uh, for the respective media houses. They've, they've got thoughts. It's, it's an improvement in, 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 on what they've been doing so far. Um, the most important thing is to qualify, which they did. They got their results, um, uh, no matter how hard it was, but they got their results. They got their job done, and I think they can build on from here in the next game. How far do you think we can go in this tournament? I think we can go all the way. We can go all the way and win the cup. Uh, they, they just have to believe them. They just have to have their self-belief. They should have their confidence and, 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 and keep working hard. Uh, I've watched almost all the teams in this tournament, and I, I don't see any team that is um, you know, super strong. I think they are almost at the same level, and uh, maybe the one that wants it more will win. And, and I want the boys to show that hunger, that they want to achieve something for Ghana, and I'm sure they will be rewarded. From what you've seen today, do you think there are specific areas that we should pay particular attention to going ahead? I think it's finishing. I think they pass the ball well from defense to midfield, but the, you know, the, in the ball to the fin into the final third and finishing has been the, the problem. And I think that the coach should con concentrate a bit more on, on their finishing. And their, um, God willing, they should be able to find the goals and, and move into the finals, the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals. Again, we won. We made it to the quarterfinals. Um, Max Okunedu has got a great deal of job to do. But again, on the evidence of what I saw, I, with the substitution he made, I think he was on point. Um, Afo, um, Afo, um, Asiedu Atobra were fantastic. And even though at some point they, they resorted to some very selfish play, but they added a lot to the game. And I think they won the game for us, actually. Do you think we have a team to go all out to the finals and win the trophy? If we, if we keep correcting the mistakes um, and we do not come against a crack side like Nigeria in the course of it, uh, luck, we can ride our luck. You personally, what have you observed about this team? It's a work in progress. It's, 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 a, it's a team that's got lots of work to be done. At every point in time, you, you identify something, you notice something at every game you get to watch. Their intention was to win this game, they won it. Uh, uh, but again, they started very slow, it was not as, as quick as it was in the Congo game, it was not as quick as it was in the like, Libya game. There's, there's a lot of work to be done, and I'm sure Maxwell agrees, and Maxwell will do some good job about it. I don't think this is a side that, that should win a trophy, honestly. Unless we tend to correct those mistakes, I don't think this is a side that can win a trophy. Away from the local Black Stars, what was your general assessment of the tournament so far? Listen, I've been here for just 24 hours now, and I was very honest in saying that this comes nowhere near the AFCON, this comes nowhere near the World Cup. Uh, but again, we can understand this is the third episode of a tournament that is very, very, very young and, and not enjoying a very good publicity. Um, so definitely, we can't compare to these two. But you know, South Africa, they will always put it on point, organization-wise. I mean, it, I mean, they make it so easy, but I think they lost the plot this time, right, by publicizing it and making uh, much noise about it. Um, uh, Malefe Olifan uh, and his guys did not do a bad job uh, by the way of organization and all that, but publicity and hype in the tournament, I don't think it's been the best. What do you think can be done to improve upon this tournament going ahead? Uh, it, would be, it would be some fun, but again, we will need to commit a lot of energy to it. Um, it's a very young tournament, but that's no excuse. If you want to do it, we should do it well. Why was this tournament created? It was created to give kids who are playing football here an opportunity to develop their game and develop their respective leagues. So if you're doing it, we must do it very well. All right, so there we are, uh, Jerry Kwame Ayinsu completing that, uh, you know, that set of interviews. So of course, we earlier heard from uh, the editor of Kotoko Express, uh, Jerry Efri Epaimka. Leo Lopez on my Facebook wall says, Roger Federer will definitely take the title. Um, Go Machine also says, I wish the local Black Stars all the best, and they will beat DR Congo by two goals to one. And uh, as for Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer, Nadal is favorite to win. But uh, gone, but never forgotten, Kamala Dumo, R.I.P. Rest in Peace. Okay, and um, now Leo Lopez sends another one that is very interesting that uh, Barcelona's president is quitting over Neymar's uh, scandal, the transfer scandal. Uh, very, very interesting uh, developments within uh, Barcelona. 
where it means that uh, Barcelona will have to look for a new leadership uh, in terms of who runs the administrative tables. Now, Nuti Fafa Desmond says, DR Congo are not playing very well at this tournament. Ghana will definitely beat them by two goals to nil. Rafael Nadal will continue dominance over Fedra. But Nat, uh, why is Sandro Roussel running away from the Neymar scandal? Hmm, time will tell. Uh, Barca will be burned and relegated for the Neymar scandal. Arsenal uh, will buy uh, Messi and Pedro. Okay, already uh, people are <laughs> looking forward to what they may see as downfall for Barcelona uh, with this scandal. Okay, Ahmed uh, Adamovic, uh, Laji Ahmed Adamovic says, Good morning, Mr. Nat. I love your outfit. Thank you very much. And uh, I think Roger Federer will triumph over Nadal this morning. But as for the local black stars, they should go all out, believe, and revenge, and nothing else. Now, Kojo Apia says, uh, kudos to uh, the local black stars. Uh, Congo's, um, um, the Congo's game is a must win. I'm tipping Fedra, uh, you know, to the final. And this, is there any transfer uh, news from us now? Kojo Apia uh, in a sinful to send that. Okay, I'll be giving you all of the updates uh, immediately. What is available is that of uh, Yuan Mata, who's moved uh, to Manchester United, of course. There is talk about how uh, Suda Ali Montari could also be making his way into, um, you know, into uh, uh, Lazio. And, of course, Michael Essien could also be going into AC uh, Miller. Mohamed Salah is um, getting into the uh, English Premier League as well. Uh, these, uh, you know, he is uh, making his way into the blue side. Uh, would see what kind of impact they'll be able to make. And I'm asking you a question. Uh, you know, what kind of impact do you expect uh, Yuan Mata's move uh, from Chelsea to Manchester United to make? You send in a message, get on my Facebook wall, and let's get talking here on the show. Let's now uh, do a few more stories from the camp of the local Black Stars, and uh, they are expected to earn 175,000 U.S. dollars uh, for qualifying to the quarterfinal of the Chan tournament. Uh, so Ghana have earned 175 US, uh, 175,000 US dollars for qualifying to the uh, quarterfinal of the Chan tournament in South Africa. So quickly, let's take a look at the uh, Chan quarterfinal fixtures and what games to expect. It is going to be Mali versus Zimbabwe, Morocco facing Nigeria, who are obviously on fire. DR Congo coming up against Ghana on Sunday, and Libya play Gabon. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we continue to do some more stories here on Sports Today. And um, Michael Essien is on the verge of signing for AC Milan. Uh, that's according to the latest updates we're getting. Ghana midfielder Michael Essien could be sealing a switch uh, to join Italian giants AC Milan in a few hours. And this is according to French newspaper Le Quip. And remember that um, Michael Essien... Uh, once had to move away from um, Chelsea, especially during the period when um, Roberto Di Matteo was in charge of the team. And uh, he uh, did a quick uh, turn and uh, returned when coach Jose Mourinho came back from Real Madrid. So he is making a move away from Chelsea. And of course, Michael Essien from uh, the period when he moved from Olympic Lyon to Chelsea uh, at that time was the most expensive African player in the excess of 40 million US dollars. Uh, that was the purchase uh, price. Okay, let's also focus on some other Ghanaian players. And uh, defender David Adi is on the radar of Sunderland. And uh, Adi's current club, uh, Victoria Gumaresh, uh, are ready to cash in on the Ghanaian international during this month's transfer window. And his former uh, side, FC Porto, who owns 70% of his economic rights are willing to release him. Now, the 23-year-old is set to be in advanced talks with German Bundesliga side Freiburg and English Premier League side Crystal Palace as well. Stoke City are reported to be interested in signing the player who is uh, valued at 1.5 million euros. Let's also uh, throw focus on Jerry Akaminko, another defender who is in trouble because he's been slapped with a three-match ban uh, for a reckless tackle on an opponent in uh, a cup game. Now, this means that the player is going to miss uh, three games. And that is very unfortunate for the Ghana defender who uh, was performing very, very well. Now, Turkish uh, football's uh, disciplinary, disciplinary body have given the 25-year-old a three-match ban. And he will be fined 4,000 euros, uh, euros. And, of course, uh, that is equivalent to 13,000 Turkish lira. 
uh, for the ruthless tackle on an opponent. The host lost uh, by 2-0 uh, to Akisar at the Ataturk Stadium. All right, let's also uh, focus on um, Black Stars captain Asamoa Jan, who has been made uh, the icon, uh, a brand icon for Unibank, who uh, are the official bank for the Black Stars. So this will mean that for the next two years, the man, Asamoa Jan, will be used um, in all the big uh, communication messages uh, of the bank, which is a wholly owned Ghanaian bank. And also after this, we go over to the story on as, um, Randy Abe, Randy Abe, immediate past chairman of the Referees Appointment Committee of the Ghana Football Association, now takes over Heart of Lions. And uh, the ambitious football administrator is said to have acquired 70% of the shares of the club. And uh, this makes him uh, owner and uh, former owner. Victor Ahiakwa becomes a, a founder and board member with Abi expected to transform the side into a world-class team. All right, now... Now let's uh, also talk about uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko, who are preparing uh, for assignments on the continent, playing in the preliminaries of the CAF Champions League. Let's take a listen to Coach Masood Ramani Didi, who's been talking about how he wants to get his players in shape ahead of um, these big assignments. Uh, for now, we are not just thinking about results, but we are thinking about performances. We are thinking about you know what we 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 set ourselves to to achieve. All over the period, the three games that we have played in all, we had objectives, you know, defensive objective, constructional objectives, and then attacking objectives. Today's game, our emphasis was not to lose the ball so easily in the final third. If we got the goals, fine. But most of the time, I was more happy anytime we don't lose the ball so easily to the opponent, but we still are able to maintain the right, you know, tempo of passing and then movement and then trying to run into space with or without the ball. I think that uh, in due course there will be times when we'll be emphasizing on, 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 on winning so that we can imbibe in our players the winning mentality. But now we want to be able to play well. We want to be able to do our, you know, our plans exactly how we have set our objectives. We work with our objectives and so they lead us into our training approaches and then they lead us into what we should put for our players. And you can see that we give each player equal opportunity to play. So that some played 60 minutes, others played you know, 90 minutes, others, others played 45 minutes. So in each, each game that we play, you see that the game we played in, um, against uh, Crystal Palace, uh, Emos started, but today he didn't start, he came on second half. You know, Adama started today, he didn't start, he came on. We're giving our players equal opportunity so that when, we, when it is time for us to begin to expect results, we begin to concentrate on those who distinguish themselves right into the various positions, right? You, you, you just don't say that it's a minor transitional period, so you are concentrating on one people. Remember, we have only 36 players who are going to compete in three competitions. And these three competitions, they will be traveling moments where fatigue will definitely set in, injuries will set in. And so we building the team said that minus one player who don't, will not be scratching our heads to be thinking about who will be the next you know, uh, player to come in. We just know that once this person is not there. And we're playing our, our players in unfamiliar you know, rules getting it to be acquainted to those roles because that's how the modern football is. If you are a wing back, you should be able to play as a winger. If you are a winger, you should be able to play as a wing back. If you are an attacking midfielder, you should be able to play as a holding or play in the middle or play wide wide there. And so you see that we kept varying our 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 team team tactical play with the same players but playing in in, in various you know but I have been very very impressed with, with, with with some players that I played in unfamiliar roles and then they distinguish themselves very, very well. So, so Preparation would have been more easier and then you would have just known that, no, this is a team I'm carrying along, right? This is the, the first choice players, this is the second choice players, okay? But minus them, it, it gives us the opportunity to get other players ready 
so that now you begin to compare. We are monitoring our, our guys in the Chan, Chan squad. We're not monitoring their physical aspect. We're monitoring their tactical aspect, and then we're monitoring their psychological approaches. So we look at the mentality they, they are playing, you know, up there. So when they come, we also, you know, coordinate and see their mentality. Is the mentality at that right? Before you fill the player, you don't just pick the player and push him in there if, if the mindset is not positive. I think that over a short period, you know, both at home and then far away in South Africa, we have uh, achieved massively well because, you know, our boys are getting the international exposure that every player would need at that, at that level. You can never have ever, any opposition. Uh, any exposure than what they, they are having at the channel level. But you remember that they were already preparing here after the league. They just jumped into the into camp. And so uh, they are still moving up with the same mentality, the same approaches. And so when they come, they come to blend with us and then we are a solid side. So you heard from uh, Coach Masood Didi Dramani. And uh, he's been talking about uh, progress in the team and what's been done so far. What also needs to be done as we get into, uh, you know, CAF, uh, you know, competition. Let's now focus on some more stories. We go into uh, Nigeria where uh, Coach Stephen Keshi is concerned about the lack of playing time that uh, Victor Moses is getting at Liverpool. Now, remember that Victor Moses was key in Nigeria's campaign at the last uh, AFCON tournament in South Africa where Nigeria emerged champions. And uh, since that move from Chelsea to Liverpool, the player has um, hardly had good playing time. And uh, Moses has only played uh, the full 90 minutes twice in the Premiership this season since moving from Chelsea uh, to get more playing time. In the last match, he only lasted uh, 45 minutes before being substituted during uh, Liverpool's FA Cup match at Odam athletic uh, on January 5 due to what looked like uh, a disinterested performance. Let's also uh, focus on international defender, uh, Nigerian uh, international Elderson Echejile. Uh, he was also part of the Nations Cup winning team and uh, he has made uh, a good debut for French club uh, AS Monaco. Echejile joined the club from Portuguese side uh, SC Braha uh, on January 17 and he's expected to play his first official game for the Le Rouge et Blanc. Um, at the league uh, in the league uh, against Toulouse on Sunday, about the trainer Claudio Ranieri decided to unleash his prized asset in the cup game instead. Let's go to Egypt, where Zamalek have a new coach. Former Tottenham Hotspur and Egypt striker Ahmed Mido Hossam has taken over as coach of the Cairo-based club uh, Zamalek. Now, the 30-year-old is said to be the youngest coach in Egyptian football history. And uh, many people uh, criticized uh, his age, but then he is ready uh, to coach uh, Zamalek, which obviously has a lot of uh, big football history uh, to go uh, with, you know, this... Um, uh, you know, to, to, to go into, uh, you know, the... the, the it has, I beg your pardon, it has very good uh, football history in Egypt. Now, Mohamed Mid, um, Mido uh, officially uh, retired from football last year after a brief spell with uh, the English Championship side, Barnsley. And the former Egypt international won the Africa Cup of Nations with the Pharaohs in 2006, despite his touch line row with uh, coach Hassan Shehata. I do remember very, very well uh, when, you know, they had a, a very bad brush up, uh, you know, but, well, at the end of the day, uh, the two made up. Okay, so uh, congratulations to Ahmed Osam. Now it's time to work and it's time to start taking uh, when you get it right and striking it out when you get it wrong. Uh, more messages are expected. Uh, some more messages are expected. Makafui Godsway says, Chelsea till I die. And uh, Alphonse Levels Taylor says, Mata is not a competitor. He should have competed with the likes of William and, uh, William and Oscar. Okay. Um, more messages are coming in. I'll be sharing some more of them with you as we go ahead uh, uh, here on the show. Remember, you can paste your comments on my wall, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. And also, you can um, get through 1760, the text code, uh, with all your messages as we bring you some more stories here on Sports Today. Some more. Um, we'll be looking at what is happening in England uh, this weekend. Um, there are FA Cup matches. And, of course, we'll be looking at what is happening in tennis, Formula One, golf, and, of course... The build-up to the Super Bowl, uh, the, um, the National Football League in the United States of America, is getting up to the biggest game that anybody can look forward to in um, the 
season. So uh, there is so much more here. Oh, of course, um, you have to look forward to the moment of the day as well. So uh, let's just re stay right there. Uh, we'll be back after a round of commercials. So these are fixtures for the next uh, round of matches. Arsenal play Coventry City, Nottingham Forest play Preston North End. Liverpool go away to Bournemouth. And, of course, Birmingham City play Swansea. Cardiff City play Bolton Wanderers. Huddersfield play uh, Charlton Athletic. Watford go over to Manchester City. And Port Vale play uh, B and Hove Albion. And Sheffield Wednesday, they play uh, Rodale, Rock Rockdale. And um, Southampton, they play Uville Town. Okay, so there it is, uh, Uville Town. And um, now uh, let's also uh, take a look at uh, more fixtures. South End United playing Hull City. Uh, Kidderman, Harriers play uh, Sunderland. Wigan Athletic play Kyle, uh, Crystal Palace. And of course, uh, Everton play Stevenage. While Sheffield United play Fulham. And Stoke City go away to Chelsea. Ken Celta Vigo play Real Betis. Granada go to Real Madrid. And uh, of course, um, Real Valladolid play Villarreal. Uh, Espanyol play Valencia, and of course Sevilla play Levante, Hetafe play Almeria, Osasuna play Athletic Bilbao, and Atletico Madrid play Rayo Vallecano. Barcelona continue with uh, their impressive performances as they play Malaga at home at the Camp Nou, and of course Real Sociedad play Elche. Ah, Stanislas Wawrinka, he could just be the uh, surprise package for Australian Open 2014. Let's uh, get into what we'll be bringing you as part of the match, uh, the moment of the day. But before that, let me say thank you to all of you for joining us here uh, this weekend. Remember, uh, GFA TV is on, uh, World Boxing Series is also on, and the football show is also on. Uh, the sports review will be on tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 30. AM as well here on this channel. The reason why you have to get your Digibox fixed and functioning at all times. Well, uh, I say thank you to the whole production team here at Joy Sports. And um, the moment of the day is, of course, Black Stars cheerleader Uju. He's in action. And uh, you'd see what exactly he's got to say to all of us. Well, um, you all stay well. Have a great weekend. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport. Apoji Aji, Apoji Aji, Aji na gogo, gogo na gaga, gaga na um, um na gogo, gogo na kafu. Apoji Walas. Apunchi Wallace, Wallace, Wallace na Aje, Aje, Aje na Gogo, Gogo, Gogo na Wallace, Wallace, Wallace na Aje, Aje, Aje na Gogo. Ede ayu ge geleba, Ede ayu ge geleba, Ede ayu. Hey, Ojoi Airport, Ojoi Airport, Ojoi Airport. Hey, Apunchi, hey, hey.